What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a video on how to mount whitetail ears. If you're new to the channel, I welcome y'all here. Appreciate y'all watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and uh, there's a whole lot of other videos on here that might be beneficial to you if you're trying to do work as a taxidermist. I've already done one on my eyes and uh, this is going to kind of be an ongoing series of some just in-depth detail stuff of just one particular part of a whitetail shoulder mount where I can show you step by step how I do my process and maybe help you uh, be able to put a whitetail together. So anyway, let's get started. All right, first things first, there are many ways that you can do ears on a deer. Uh, some people use Bondo and just fill in the entire inside of the ear without ever removing the cartilage. Some people remove the cartilage uh, and then use Bondo. Uh, I personally like ear liners, uh, mainly because they're fast, they're durable, and I don't like messing with Bondo if I don't have to. This is just easier and these are relatively cheap. I use McKenzie ear liners it does have the inner ear inside of it, but I don't use that because I leave the cartilage attached to my ear butts. If y'all go to the video that I've made of how I turn the ears and remove the cartilage, I'll show y'all how I cut that cartilage so that it fits in this ear liner once I cut this ear liner. I'll show y'all how I do this. All right, I take a reciprocating saw with just a fine tooth metal blade on it. That way it don't break your ear liner all to pieces. But right around, right around here, you want to cut it where you're up above where that hole is and chop it off right there. Just like that. What you'll end up with Get that ear liner and it just ends right there in that ear. You can tuck that ear skin up into this hole and then your cartilage that you trimmed on your ear will fit right against the back of that like a puzzle piece. Kind of locks that in place and you've still got the inner ear that is natural for the deer. If y'all can't tell, I've got several that I've chopped off here in the last few days. <laughs> okay, now we're going to put in our ear liners. You see I've got the bottom trimmed and in here, you see where I've still got the cartilage left on the bottom of the inner ear where that ear butt is. What it's going to do, it's going to fit right in there. It's going to lock into place when we slide that into that ear. You want to make sure that you get plenty of glue on the entire surface of the ear liner, but you don't want to have excess glue because you'll, the ear will get bubbled out. You want it to be real thin lay right up against these ear liners. You just gotta make sure that you've got glue making contact with all of the skin in there. You can squeeze some of the glue out once you get the ear liner in. Uh, you'll have to kind of you know, squeeze a little bit out so that the edges stay good and, and sharp. About like that. I'm just gonna insert this ear liner. You just squeeze, take the inner ear with your finger. And as you work this up onto this ear, push this down into the bottom of that ear liner where you cut that hole out. Just like that. That'll pop right into place. See right here. See where the bottom of that airliner is? The edge of that cartilage just lays right up against it, holds it in place. Just like that. It's that easy.
All right, now we're gonna add our modeling clay. In the past, I have done these ears completely and entirely on the form instead of adding any clay beforehand, but I've learned that adding a little bit of this clay in here first and building up those ear butts and those muscles, it's a little bit easier once you put it on the form to just add the clay that you need to fill on in back to the skull. I like to use a little bit at a time, no more than a little piece about that big. And on this ear, if you look at anatomy on some pictures of live deer, you'll notice that there's a muscle that runs down right here, a muscle up top, and then another muscle that bulges down right here on the bottom. What we're gonna do is just rebuild that. If you hold your fingers in the inner ear right here and take that clay and mash and press that up into the ear liner, so that it kind of goes over the top of that ear liner, and you can mold that into place, and it'll transition over the edge of that, where that plastic of that ear liner is. First, I'll do that all the way around the edges. Just get that clay up in there against that ear liner all the way around the whole ear. If you get clay all in the hair, then it's okay. You can always wash it. Clay comes right out. So you can see the shape. So it's starting to take shape. You've got a muscle here, another muscle down here. That's what you want. You just want to build that up enough to where you've got the anatomy of that ear built. And all that I'll do, you see, you still see that inner ear. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in and just right over the back of that inner ear. The rest of it will do once it's on the mannequin. Just like that. And that will be enough clay for right now. Once we get them on a form, we'll finish that on up. Okay, now I have got both sides of my bees stitched up, stitched right up to there, but I have not tied these two strings together yet. I'm gonna leave those apart so that I can spread this apart how I need to to get some more clay back in there behind that ear. Y'all can see we've already got the clay built up right there to redo those muscles, but you can see how there's still a gap right here where there's loose skin on each deer, this is different. That's one reason why I don't like to go in here and build my ear butts and glue them up and then remove them like some people do because sometimes the deer's capes are big right here with a bunch of wrinkles. Sometimes they're real thin. And with that modeling clay, you can rebuild it for as much skin as there is, you know, after you put it on the form. So that's why I do mine this way. Let's add some of this modeling clay. Take bits and pieces at a time, kind of like we did inside the ear. Just put that in there behind there and go all the way up to the front, right here where this, you'll see this gap is, push that modeling clay in right there. See how that's filling that in. Just gonna keep doing that, adding a little bit at a time until we fill in that excess skin. Keep in mind too, of how you want your ears positioned because that will also determine how much clay you use. If you've got ears that are gonna be pinned back, which this deer is, then you don't have to put a whole bunch of clay behind the ear because it's gonna be laying back against that head anyway. As y'all can see, it's starting to stiffen, stiffen up now. I've got enough in there to where I can build some wrinkles and I can go ahead and build that bottom muscle. So I'm gonna add a little bit to the other side. We're gonna get him stitched back up and then come back. I'll show you how I'm gonna put the detail in him. All right, well, we got all this generally roughed in, except for the ear. You can see the ear just looks like a tube coming out. <laughs> it's just not quite right. So what we're gonna do you're gonna take your thumb and put it inside the ear butt to make sure that that stays tucked 
and make sure that that cartilage stays pressed outside of that ear liner and just press back toward the base of the antler. You can see where it bunched that up right there, made a little hump. What that's going to do, it kind of sets the ear liner down in that clay and also gives you the general shape of where the clay needs to be all the way up against the back of the eye socket. And just start working your shape into this. And, and it's like I said before, make sure that you get you some reference photos to look at the first several times that you do this. And it won't take long and you'll just start remembering where all the musculature is in the ears and you'll just be able to build them from uh, memory. Y'all can see how I'm forming this top muscle right here and then this bottom one. The way that a deer's ear moves too, as this ear twists and comes back forward, what will happen is this muscle right here will kind of take over. The bottom muscle will be get thinner and thinner and thinner from what you can see from the front. When you've got a forward pose. Matter of fact, I think I've got some in here. You see like on the bottom of that deer right there, that little muscle on the bottom, you can't see it near as good from the front. When a deer's ear twists back around behind him, that muscle kind of sticks out. You can see more of it than you can the top part. But the main thing is you just want to make sure that there's separation right there between the top and the bottom that goes right up toward that inner ear, right where that cup in that ear is. Come down along the bottom of the head right here. Press that in to make sure that it stays stays rounded and then goes back up. And you want there to be separation right here between the, the ear and that ear butt where it comes up like, like that. You don't want it to be a tube. You don't want it to come straight out. Same way with the top right here. You want it to come in and then back out into an ear. See how it's got that shape of that ear butt? And I promise y'all, the first few times that you do this, actually, probably every time that you ever do this, you're not going to be happy with the ears for about two days. I'll sit here and I'll press on them and I'll move them and mess with them just about until they're completely dry. Every time I look at the deer a different day, it seems like I come back and look at it and it's just not, not quite the ear position that I'm wanting. Okay, that's, that's generally what we want. You want to make sure that you're black on the edge of your fur line right there, stays right along the edge of that ear. All right, let's get him stood up, look at him from the front, kind of see how that looks. Be honest with you, that's not bad. I've already done the other side. I've got that side just about matching as well. As you see from the front, the ears are laying Kind of low they're back but they're not up you don't want it to look up or it'll look like a rabbit you want it to lay down and back and you also don't want them cupped under you want them spread out to the sides listening unless it's an aggressive pose the, when they do an aggressive pose they'll cup their ears facing down all right now that we got the general shape built in there i'm going to take my modeling tool right here in the top i'm just going to make a few wrinkles I'm not going to be able to tell a whole lot about it right now. It's just going to press into that clay a little bit. Until that cape and that clay starts to dry a little bit, you won't be able to make real good detail quite yet. But that will definitely get it started. You can see the wrinkles in there once we come back tomorrow. As that begins to dry, we'll work that in a little bit deeper. And as it dries, it will hold those wrinkles in there. Give it a little bit of detail. Well, y'all, as y'all can see, it is now dark outside. Got this deer done earlier. This is the one that we did the ears on, pinned back. Now I put another deer on the form that the ears are gonna be straight out to the side. So I figured I'd show y'all on this one how I fixed the ears 
instead of just showing y'all what I had in there on the wall that was already done, now y'all can see how it's done. It actually worked out pretty good. I didn't realize this deer was gonna be a straightforward face and form, but uh, after I got done with it, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and show this on this video too. So anyway, let me get my camera mounted up and I'm gonna show y'all how this is done. Okay, now on this deer that we did with the ears pinned back, you can see how the bottom muscle protrudes right there and this one's kind of folded back. On this one, when the ears face forward like this, you're gonna to wanna to make this bottom muscle smaller where you almost can't even see it. Gonna be about like that. And you're gonna tuck it on, up under the ear and tuck it right there at the head. And you're just gonna keep working at that until you get it to where it looks smooth from the deer's head. And you wanna make sure that ear butt comes down and then out to the ear. You don't want it to be just a big tube. Also make sure that you keep your thumb or your finger down in the inside of that ear. Make sure you keep the ear skin pressed up against that ear liner and make sure you keep the inner ear pressed down into that clay. As you're working with all of this, sometimes it'll have a tendency to pop it back up into the ear. You don't want that to happen. And when you, when you get done, it's gonna dry and your inner ear is gonna be sticking out right there. That's not what you want. Keep this smooth down right here behind this antler where you've got a little bit of a swag where it comes down from the antler to the ear and then back up, just like that. general shape that you want when you're doing this, if you'll follow the front edge of that ear, you're gonna want this, this edge to come right down and transition into that. It's gonna just make like an S curve. That's when you're gonna know you got the right symmetry. Then you just work this muscle right here into the bottom. like that. Make sure that stays pressed right there. That's going to give you your definition of the from the muscle up to the ear. And then just like we did on the other one, we're going to take our tucking tool. We're going to make a few wrinkles in here. Once again, this isn't gonna show up great right now. That clay starts drying. Once it does, you can cut that on in again and it'll start to hold its shape. There you go, you can see how that ear looks now compared to that other one. <laughs> that one's kind of floppy. That's just the general, general shape that you want. You tilt it more, a little bit more forward like that right there is kind of how you want it. All right, well, y'all can see, guys, that isn't really that hard to do. Uh, main thing is symmetry. You want to make sure that that ear is coming out where it's supposed to on the back of that head and in relation to the bases of the antlers. Uh, get some reference photos. Just Google deer and look up images, and you'll be able to see a whole bunch of different positions of ears, that kind of thing, and you'll really be able to see the muscles, too, and the way that the muscles move as the deer moves his ears. So depending on what kind of form you've got, the direction of the turn, how, how far the head is up or down, uh, you can change the ears in relation to the head to where that it, it's moving like a deer would move naturally. And those customers will really appreciate that. It's one of those things that you don't really notice unless you know to look for it, but it will make the deer look, uh, I guess, more alive just because the ears are doing what they're supposed to do. Deer's ears go all over the place, but they have a tendency to move a certain direction depending on what that deer's doing and the posture that he has. 
So anyway, guys, really appreciate y'all watching. I've got to go and get me some food and get me some rest because it has been a long day. If y'all hadn't already, y'all hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it. We'll see y'all next time.